have a quick one today and then uh, give you the rest of class for your test. So, uh, next chapter, chapter nine, all about quadratics. You might have come across a quadratic formula before the quadratic equation. That's what we'll be largely working up to in this class. So, uh, start with our first example. Maybe uh, give a quick warning really quick. When I say, what is the square root of four, what is it? Two, right? And it's not negative two. Even though, what is negative two times negative two? It's positive four. So the square root, when we do a square root of a number, we always choose the positive value. We don't do the negative. Same thing when I do the fourth root. If I were to say, what is the fourth root of, what is it, 32? Yeah, no, 16, sorry. Fourth root of 16, what does that equal? We say it equals two. Even though negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two is also 16. Right. When we do cube roots, when it's an odd number, then there is only one answer, and so it can be positive or negative. So when I say the cube root of negative eight, this is always negative two. There isn't any other answer it could be. So when your radicals are even, then it's always just a positive answer. When it's odd, it could be positive and it could be negative. So, but when it's even, it's always the even answer. So like with what you did with the i, so if it's a sign variable, then it can be completely different? Well, it's just how we choose to define this. We chose to define square root such that it gives a positive answer. Even though negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. Right. So this is very different from then if I were to give you the problem, I tell you x squared now is equal to 4. What does x equal? The answer here now is x equals plus or minus the square root of 4. Or in other words, it's equal to plus or minus 2. This has two solutions. But the square root of 4 itself, that is always just 2. So we're saying it's plus or minus 2. So square root, 4th root, 6th root, 8th root, anytime it's an even number, we always choose, by definition, we choose it to just give the positive value. So you can't take a square root and get a negative number. You can't take a fourth root and get a negative number. You can't take a sixth root and get a negative number. You can take a third root or a fifth root or a seventh root and get a negative number. Okay. So that's what he's going to be telling you here. When solving radical problems with an even index, check your answers. What he's saying there is, uh, make sure your answer comes out positive. You can't have a square root giving you a negative answer. And I assume he'll have that come up in one of these examples. But that's what that big warning there right, starts about. Okay, so we have a problem like this. Square root of 7x plus 2 is equal to 4. How do we solve this? We start out by squaring both sides. So I'll square this side, square this side. When I square this side, what do I get? What is the square root of 7x plus 2 all squared? Square root of that. 7x plus 2. <laughs> all right. If I take the, I have the square root of x and I decide I'm going to square it, what do I get? Just x. Squaring just undoes the square root. That's all it does. So over here, if I square the square root of 7x oh, plus 2, what do I get? 7x just 7x plus 2. If I square 4, what do I get? If I square 4, what do I get? 16. 16. All right, so now I know 7x plus 2 is equal to 16. Move the 2 to the other side. So I subtract 2 from both sides, I get 7x is equal to? 16. If I subtract oh, 2 from both sides? 14. 14, so x is equal to? 2. 2. And when you plug in 2 for x right here, do you get a positive number out of your radical? Yeah, so we're good. And we're saying it spits out a positive number, so we're good. So the answer there is going to be x equals 2. And there he goes, x equals 2. Let's try this next one. I've got a cubed root of x minus 1 is equal to negative 4. Now, since we've got a cubed root equaling a negative number, we're not worried. If it was a fourth root equaling a negative number, instantly we know no solution. Doesn't work. But it's an odd root, so we're okay. All right, so I've got the cube root of x minus 1 is equal to negative 4. What am I going to do? Cube both sides. So I'm going to cube this side, raise this side to the power of 3. I'm going to raise this side to the power of 3. 
What is the cube root of x minus 1 all raised to the power 3? It's just x minus 1. The cube root undoes the cube. So this comes out just x minus 1. And now what is negative 4 to the power 3? That's negative 4 times negative 4, positive 16, times negative 4 is negative 64. Negative 64. Plus 1 to both sides, and what do we get? Negative 63. X is equal to negative 63. And we don't need to worry about checking that one. We're good. Because we can take cube roots of negative numbers, which is not positive. All right. Here's the next problem here. We've got the fourth root of something equals negative 3. Impossible. No solutions. I know right out the door. A fourth root is always a positive number. A square root is always a positive number. A fourth root is always a positive number. A sixth root is always a positive number. He's saying it's equal to negative 3. Nope. Doesn't work. So I instantly know no solutions. Mm -hmm. well, no, because the square root is positive. It's a fourth root. A fourth root is always a positive number. It's never a negative number. So I instantly know no solutions. Now we can try and work this out the way you know and love, and it's going to look like it's working. So if I take the fourth, raise both sides to the fourth power, raise both sides to the fourth power, then let's see, what am I going to get? Over here I get 3x plus 6 is equal to, what's negative 3 to the power of 4? 81. 81. Right? 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Or the same thing as 9 times 9. Okay? Subtract 6 from both sides, and I get 3x is equal to... Just subtracting 6 from 81. So you come at 74. 70. So close. Right. 75. And so now we get x is equal to 25. But why? Oh, it's because it's 4 times. Now look how this all seems like it's working. We were able to get x. x is 25. Plug it back in. So let's see. 3 times 25 is 75, right. plus 6 is 81. So we got the fourth root of 81. What is the fourth root of 81? It's 3. It is not negative 3. Oh. So that's why we instantly knew right out the door this is bad. The fourth root of something, always a positive number. Never a negative number. So that's why no solution. And so he's trying to trick you there. And he solves x equals 25. And he says, nope, because now we're getting 3 equals negative 3. It doesn't make sense. So no solution is the answer. Not x equals 25. Easy trap to fall into. All right. Slightly more complex one. Do not just instantly start squaring stuff without thinking about it. When we're solving these problems that have radicals, I want to get the radical by itself on one side, everything else on the other side, then square it. So you want to move the x? So I want to move the x. That's exactly right. So I've got the square root of 4x plus 1 is equal to 5 minus x, like that. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we have everyone, right? Yeah. Yeah, we got everyone. Thank you. All right, so now that we got the radical by itself, now we square both sides. That way we'll get rid of the radical. If you just tried squaring both sides of this, your answer would have still had a bunch of, you would have ended up with a bunch of radicals still. It would have just made a big mess. We do this first, now we square both sides, and it's actually going to clean up. So squaring this, we're left with just 4x plus 1 is equal to, now we need to square this whole thing out. We're squaring this, and we're squaring this. So we're going to get 25 minus 10x, plus x squared. That's what you get if you would multiply that out. You can just do it longhand way if you want. Some of you are already seeing how you do that. You should know how to square how'd that out. How would you get the 10x? <laughs> 5 times negative x and oh. negative x times 5, add them together, minus 10x. Or a minus b squared is equal to a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Whichever way you remember. Now, we're going to solve this. I'm going to, let's put everything on the right-hand side and make my left-hand side 0, and we're going to solve this with factoring. So 0 is equal to, 25 minus 1 is going to be, well, let's try our x squared first. x squared is x squared. We have negative 10x, and I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, so that's going to be minus 14x. And 25, we're minusing 1 from both sides, is going to be plus 24. So I'm looking for two numbers. Add together, give me negative 14. Multiply together, give me 24. What are they? Would it be 
Nope, not the eight one. All right, what else is there? Come on, what does 24 factor into? 12. Oh, 12 and 2. 12 and 2. So it's x minus 12, x minus 2. And so what are answers equal to 0? When is this equal to 0? When x is 12. So x equals 12 is one solution. And when is this equal to get 0? When x is 2. x equals 2 is another solution. So those are our two solutions. And so, da da da, x equals 12 or x equals 2. Surprise, surprise. Now, the only thing we would have to double check is our answers don't make our square root negative. If I plug in 12 up here, does it give me a negative under the radical? No, it's 48 plus 1, we're good. If I plug in 2, do we get a negative under the radical? No, so both solutions work. So we're good. Uh, Why do they still have the x on that side? Oh, let's see. Oh, it might not be as simple as making sure the radicals work. So once we have these two answers, unfortunately, the only thing you can do is you have to plug it all the way back in to make sure the answer worked. So no trick to it other than plug it back in. So go back to our initial problem. Here was our initial problem. I need to plug in 12, see if it works, and I need to plug in 2, see if it works. So let's plug in 12 really quick. When I plug in 12, what do I get? I get 12 plus, let's see, 12 times 4 is, 12 times 4 is, 48 plus 1 is, the square root of 49 is, is what? 7. So I get 7 equal to 5. 12 plus 7 equals 5? No. So this x equals 12 does not work. Let's try x equals 2. Plug in 2 up here. We get 2 plus the square root of, well, we'll do this in our heads. 4 times 2 is? 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is? 9. Square root of 9 is? 3. 2 plus 3 is? 5. So 2 does work. 12 didn't work, 2 does work. So whenever your radical is even, you always have to check that both your, your answers work. Whenever your radical is odd, you're already good. Okay. Uh, that was just checking, that was just checking. Uh, that's about the same thing. This one's a little bit more complex. We'll do this one. All right, looking now at this problem. Notice that this one has two radicals. What do we do? Let's get our more complex radical on one side and the easier one on the other side. So I'm gonna get that this is the square root of 2x plus 1 is equal to 1 plus the square root of x. You with me? Yeah. Now square both sides. Squaring this side, we're left with just 2x plus 1. So that's nice and easy. It's equal to, we were squaring both sides, so that's squared. That's still 1. That's squared. Just x. 1 times 1 is 1 plus 1 times square root of x is square root of x times 1 gives me 2 square roots of x. Plus x times x is just x. x. Now, once again, I'm going to get my radical by itself on one side, everything else on the other side, and then square again. Make sense? So, uh, we'll keep my square root of x over here, we'll put everything else over here. So I'm going to subtract one from both sides, subtract one, subtract one, I'm going to subtract x from both sides, subtract x, subtract x, and what we're left with is 2x minus x, just gives me x, is equal to, on this side we have, to square roots of x. Good? Now, square both sides, and I get x squared is equal to, when I square this side, we get 4x. Now, put everything on the one side and solve by factoring. So I get x squared minus 4x is equal to 0, factor out the x, so I get x times x minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, this is true whenever this factor is 0 or this factor is 0. When is x equal to 0? When x is equal to 0. So x equals 0 is going to be one solution. And when is x minus 4 equal to 0? When x is 4. So that's when x is equal to 4. 
Now we have to plug those in to make sure that they work. That's really quick check. Plugging in zero. Zero plus one is one. The square root of one is one. One minus the square root of zero is one minus zero. One minus zero is equal to one. Zero works. Plug in four. Two times four is eight, plus one is nine. The square root of nine is three. Minus the square root of four, so we got three minus two is equal to one. They both work. Okay, uh, we have two radicals. That one might be messy enough. Let's do another messy one. And then we'll call good with this section. So one more messy one. Again, we have two radicals. What are we gonna do? We're gonna move them one to each side and square. Typically, we want whichever radical seems harder to work with by itself. So this one seems hard to work with. This one seems a bit easier, so I'm gonna move that one over there with the negative one. So I'm going to get that the square root of 3x plus 9 is equal to negative 1. Maybe I'll write the square root first. The square root of x plus 4 minus 1. Good? And now we square both sides. So I'm going to take this side, I'm going to square it. I'm going to take this side, I'm going to square it. Over here, we're just left with 3x plus 9. Over here, we're left with this times this, which is x plus 4. That is really bad. Then we have this times this, and this times this, so that's going to be minus 2 square roots of, this isn't much better, x plus 4. And then finally, negative 1 times negative 1 is plus 1. Again, we're going to get the radical by itself, everything else on the other side. So I'm going to move this over here, everything else over there. So moving this over here, that's going to give me a 2 square roots of x plus 4 is equal to, over here, what are we going to get? We have an x, but I'm going to subtract 3x, is going to be negative 2x. That's bringing all my x's over. Let's see, we have a 4 plus 1 is going to be 5. 5 subtract 9 is negative 4, right? Good. And finally, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I'm going to get that the square root of x plus 4 is equal to dividing that, we get negative x. Divide that by 2, we get negative 2. All right, now i got square both sides. So square this side, square this side, and see what we get. Why do you square them twice? I gotta get rid of it. So the first squaring took care of one radical, then get the other radical by itself to square again. Yep. So two radicals, usually that means double squaring. So we got x plus 4. x plus 4 from here is equal to negative x times negative x gives me positive x squared. Negative x times negative 2 is 2x. Negative 2 times negative x is 2x for a total of plus 4x. And then finally, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. All right, now get everything over by itself, and we're going to factor. So we're going to be left with 0 is equal to x squared still x squared. 4x minus x is plus 3x. 4 minus 4 is 0. So this is equal to x times x plus 3. When is x equal to 0? When x is equal to 0. When is x plus 3 equal to 0? When x is equal to negative 3. And now, since we were using square roots, we got to go back to start, plug it into our initial problem, and make sure they work. So let's plug in 0 really quick. 0 plus 9 is 9. Square root of 9 is 3. So this one came out 3. So we have 3 subtract. What were we plugging in? 0. 0 plus 4 is? 4. Square root of 4 is? 2. two. 3 minus 2 equals negative 1? No. no. So plugging in 0 doesn't work. Now let's plug in negative 3, right? So negative 3 times 3 is? Negative 9. Negative 9. Negative 9 plus 9 is? Negative 9 plus 9 is? 0. 0. Negative 9 plus positive 9 is 0. Okay, so that comes out 0. Negative 3 plus 4 is? Positive 1. Square root of positive 1 is? 
just one. So negative one equals negative one. That's just one. It's not negative one. Negative oh, yeah. one yes. equals yes. negative one. Yes. yes. So x equals negative three works. So that's our solution. This only has one solution. X equals negative three. Our solution, x equals negative three. Yay, we did it. Okay. Next section, similar. You just you take you do the opposite basically. Yeah, this one's kind of like the reverse of the previous section. So you're going to start with x to the five equals something. Now this time we're going to cancel out the exponents by taking radicals. So x to the five equals thirty-two. Take the fifth root of both sides. The fifth root of x to the five is equal to just x. Right. Because right. the fifth right. root and the x to the five cancel just each other like out. There was a two or a three. In it. Right for anything. Similarly, the fifth root of 32, well, that's just 2. Right? Because 2 times 2 times 2, 5 times is equal to 32. All right. Now, it's nice and simple when your exponent is odd. When your exponent is even, then there's always going to be two solutions, plus or minus the fourth root of whatever you get. So if x to the 4 is equal to 16, then x is going to be equal to... Let's try this right now. Sure. Then x is going to be equal. Can you guys see that green? Yes. Then x is going to be equal to plus or minus the fourth root of 16. Okay. And the fourth root of 16 is 2, so it's plus or minus 2. So it's always going to have two solutions when you're solving an even exponent. Oh, it's going to be okay. plus or minus the whatever root when it's even. When it's odd, it's only going to have one solution. When it's even, it's going to have two solutions. Okay. If it has any. It may have no solutions, but if it has a solution, it's going to be two solutions. So x equals plus or minus 2. All right. Let's try this. So this time, 2x plus 4 squared is equal to 36. So you take the square root of both sides to cancel out the squared, right? Almost. So it's going to be, take the square root of this side... But then we got to do plus or minus the square root of this side. You can't just take the square root. Anytime you're undoing an even exponent, you need to do plus or minus. So anytime there's a plus or minus, that means there's two. two uh, yes, if it's an even exponent, there's going to be two solutions. Or no solutions, but typically two solutions. So the square root of the square root does undo each other. So we have 2x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 36. What's the square root of 36? Come on, square root of 36. 6. So it's going to be equal to plus or minus 6. Now, we can solve for each of our solutions. Handle the positive case, handle the negative case. So let's handle the positive case. If 2x plus 4 was equal to positive 6, then we would have gotten that 2x is equal to subtracting 4 from both sides. 6 minus 4 would have been 2, or in other words, x equals 1. So that handles the positive case, let's handle the negative case. If that was negative 6, subtract 4 from both sides, and we get 2x is equal to negative 10, or in other words, x is equal to negative 5. And those are our two solutions. x equals 1, x equals negative 5. And these ones you do not have to plug back in to check. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Try another one of these. So I got 6x minus 9 squared equals 45. Take the square root of both sides. So I got 6x minus 9 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 45. Now 45 is the same thing as what? 9 times 5. So we can pull the 9 out and make it a 3. So this is going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 squared to 5. Oops, sorry of three square roots of five. Okay, so now we just handle the positive case, handle the negative case. So I either get that six x is equal to nine plus three square roots of five, moving the nine to the other side, or I get six x is equal to nine minus three square roots of five. In this case, divide both sides by six, and I get x is equal to, nine divided by six is equal to what? 
Uh, well, let me guess how the author is going to do this. We'll just write it. 9 plus 3 squared to 5. We'll just write that over 6. Or cancel a 3 out top and bottom, and we're left with that's the same thing as 3 plus the square root of 5 over 2. That's 1x. And then our other x is the exact same thing. It's just instead of positive here, it was negative. So our other answer is 3, three minus, minus the square root of 5 over 2. Over two. Now, I don't know if the author writes as two separate answers or if he writes his answer as plus or minus and writes them both in one. That's what they would mean if he did 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2. He's given both answers in one. And we'll see how he gives it. And he combined them. 3 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Okay. Uh, with odds, it's the exact same thing. If you're just taking the cubed root of each side. The cubed root, we only get one answer. So the even ones are in general harder. That's the same idea as the other ones. Let's see if we can get a harder one. Okay, here's a better one. We've got a mix here. So I've got 4x plus 1 to the 2 fifths. How am I going to cancel out the 2 fifths? I'm going to raise it to the 5 halves power to both sides. So you can Huh? Well, yeah, so you can cancel them out. You got the right idea there. So, in other words, I'm going to take this, I'm going to raise it to the 5 halves power. I'm going to take this, I'm going to raise it to the 5 halves power. Remember, when you raise exponents to exponents, you multiply them together. What is 2 fifths times 5 halves? 1. So, in other words, it's 4x plus 1 to the power of 1. That's the whole reason I did the 5 halves. So this is 4x plus 1 to the 1, or 4x plus 1, is equal to 9 to the 5 halves. Now we can calculate 9 to the 5 halves. We can raise it to the 5th, then take its square root, or we can take its square root, then raise it to the 5th. I'm going to take its square root first. What's the square root of 9? 3. 3 to the power of 5 is... Impress me. 3 to the power of 5 is... No, we're doing 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Five times. What's 3 to the power of 4? 81. Okay, so 81 times 3 is? 243. 243. 80 times 3 is 240. So 81 times 3, 243. So 4x plus 1 is 243. Or in other words, 4x is equal to 244. And let's see. Divide by 4. So. How is it 44 if you're Because you're adding 1 to the whole side. X is equal to 62, I oh, think. Oh, that's right. That's actually. Oh, good yeah. point. Divide, subtract 1 for both sides. Oh, so I screwed up there. Good catch. So that's 242, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. Uh, 42. Yeah, I'm not sure why I wrote there. I wrote a mistake. Uh, 42 divided by 4 is. It doesn't work. Yeah. Hmm. I don't like how this answer is coming out. So x is equal to 121 over 2. Is that how he writes his answer? We'll see what he does. It makes it feel like I have an answer, a wrong answer somewhere. 121 over 2. Oh, and I missed one. And negative 61. Is it always plus or minus? Oh, I didn't do. Eh, I'm doing too much steps in one go. Shoot. Going too fast. Gotta take it one step at a time. So we'll break it down how the author does. So we'll follow his first few steps here. So we have 4x plus 1 to the 2 fifths is equal to 9. 4x plus 1 to the 2 fifths is the same thing as taking the fifth root of it and squaring it. So first thing he does to both sides then is takes their square root to cancel out the squaring. So you have square root of this side and then plus or minus square root of this side. So we'll pick up from here and I think we'll be good. So squaring, square root undoes the squaring. And so on this side we're left with the fifth root of 4x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus square root of 9 is 3. three. And now, we're going to raise both sides to the fifth power. 
and we're going to get 4x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 3 to the power of 5. 3 to the power of 5, we already calculated that, is 243. And then that's where he's getting his two answers. So we get 4x is equal to uh, negative 1 plus or minus 243. So for our first answer, if we take the positive version of it, that's the one that we already got from before. We got x was equal to, when we do the positive, negative 1 plus 243 gives us positive 242. 242 over 4, which is the same thing as 121 over 2. That's one answer. Our other answer comes from when we take the negative. So we get 4x is equal to negative 244. Which gives us x is equal to negative 64 or, or 62. Let me I think. think. It might have been 62. 64. No, 64, right? Uh, 61. Oh, 61. Let me think. 244 divided by 2 would have been 122. And then divide that by 2 again, 61. You're right. Okay, negative 61. Okay, and now let's check our answers here again. 121 over 2, that was from taking the positive version, and then yeah, negative 61, taking the negative version. So, couldn't do it all in one go, unfortunately. Let's do one more mix like this, and I think we'll pretty much be good. Okay, so I got to the 3 fourths, that means cubed root, we're cubing it and taking the fourth root. So, let's, uh, I'm going to view this as taking the fourth root and then cubing. Okay. So this is 3x minus 2. We're taking its fourth root. Fourth. All right. And then we're cubing it. Oh, wait. I want to do it the other way. I want to cube it and take its fourth root. Yeah, because I know how to take the fourth root of 64 real easily. Yep. Sorry. Not thinking. So we're going to cube it, and then we're going to take its fourth root. And we're going to take the fourth root of this side. Remember, that's an even, so we got to do the plus or minus over here. So plus or minus the fourth root of 64. Now, what is the fourth root of 64? Four. Two. So take the... That's four. Sorry. What am I doing? Oh, no. It's two. This is equal to 64. Sorry. Uh, oh crap. I had it right the first time. I just got rid of my head. Alright, I want to do the fourth root and then cube it. Doesn't matter which order we do these, but it's going to make the algebra easier. So 3x minus 2, we're going to do its fourth root, and then we're going to cube it because first thing I'm going to do is have to take the cube root of both sides. Okay, so starting right there. This is rewriting this. Now I take the cube root of both sides. And since I'm doing the cube root, there's no plus or minus. So we still get the fourth root of 3x minus 2 is equal to, take the cube root now of 64, and what do we get? Cube root of 64. Cube root of 64. It's not 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so it's not 3. It's 4. 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So cube root of 64 is just 4. Okay, now we raise each side to the fourth power, and we get 3x minus 2 is equal to, now what's 4 to the power of 4? Well, that's going to be 64 times 4. I don't know off the top of my head. Plug it in real quick. 256. Oh, I should have known that, actually. Just double up 128, then double 256. Okay, so now we get 3x is equal to, plus 2 to both sides, and that is 258. Try 258 divided by 3, see if it comes out evenly. You need to add it to It comes out to 82? 86. 86. So it came out perfectly, x equals 86. And that was 258 divided by 3. We don't need to do plus or minus at all. We didn't have to do any plus or minus on that. Why didn't we have to? Because there's one solution. We were taking... Uh, the cube root there. What we do have to do 
since we're taking a fourth root of something, is we need to come back and plug in and make sure it gave us a valid answer. So this is one where you have to go back, plug in, check, make sure it worked. 86 in this case, minus 2, is going to be 84. Oh, wait, 86 times 3, then minus 2. So that gets us a 256. And in this case, it's going to work. It's going to come out good. If we would have gotten some negative number under the radical, we would have known that wouldn't have worked. Or if the number over here was negative, we would have known it wouldn't have worked. But, so in that case, x equals 86, and he plugs it back in and makes sure it works. Okay, so that's it for those two sections, very similar sections, just solving problems with radicals. Uh, so that's it for new lecture material. I'll give you your homework, and you have the rest of the class for your test.